Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a bit more of a two-part tutorial. One part being Blender and just showing you the typical ropes on Blender and creating a composition. The second part is going to be rocking within Figma and I'm going to show you how to pretty much take your layout, typography, some cool frazzle dazzle, drop that in front of your Blender stuff to get this synergized like flyer kind of thing so I'll show you how to do that there will be a section where we're gonna need a video tool so I recommend DaVinci Resolve I'll show you that or you could use iMovie anything like that it's a really simple really simple interaction that I think any of us can do but let's just dive right on in okay so first things first per usual let's go ahead and delete everything now what you're gonna want to do to make sure everything is up and running when we get there Turn on ambient occlusion in your scene settings, bloom, screen space for fractions. Um, also set the background of your world to just straight up 000, zero, zero dark. Now head over here to preferences. Pay very close attention to this portion because you will need this to get this up and running with simplicity. So type in import images as planes. You can go ahead and uncheck enable add-ons if you don't see it but this will allow us to take that video file that we're gonna download or um, I can link you something but we'll get to that step soon okay as in soon I mean right now so <laughs> let's go ahead and shift a open up uh, your adding tool images as planes I have a folder where you're gonna go wherever you're I'm going to use the scene from Attack on Titan because I'm an Attack on Titan fan and right now everything's getting really good in the show. But what you're going to go ahead and is pull in any sort of video file that you have. Uh, I believe we can use MP4, we can use MOVs, but just bring that in. You want to make sure it's 16 by 9 for this tutorial, I would say. Now, first thing you want to do is know what frame rate the video that you're playing is in the frame rate that I have for my video is 60 frames a second but you can see blender right now is doing 30 and it's moving in slow motion we don't want that so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my frame rate to 60 and I'm gonna also increase the time of the timeline to around a thousand because it's a bit of, it's a bit of a long clip actually I'm gonna do 2000 because I got time today to render something and you can see you have the video playing essentially and honestly if this is what you're here for to figure out how to import videos into blender this tutorial is over for you <laughs> you could uh, wrap it up set this as you want and uh things will be done but if you're looking to make it like the composition that i've shown today stay tuned we're gonna go ahead and play around with that so let's leave this be i'm getting sidetracked here so we have our video now which is great the first thing I'm gonna do is handle the modeling of it all I'm gonna show you how to create a TV like object and then we're gonna make that model do some stuff and things will be rolling so let's start with that TV like object so let's go ahead and create a cube I will set to wireframe just because it's kind of important to see everything I'll view it in the front and what you're gonna do is pretty much if you want to set it in the front if you want to see it the material i'm going to bring this down a tad bit you want to think of like when you're in the store for a tv the tvs kind of have this nice you can see it behind me too actually in my camera tvs nowadays are really cut and close so what you're going to do is kind of use the scale tool to just like bring things in um, let's check the wireframe once again. You can see where our image is. And then we're, we're gonna do some fun stuff with modeling. Very light, very light, nothing too difficult. I think you can handle it. So press tab to enter edit mode. Switch it to faces. And what we're gonna do, select the front face now. If you press E, then press S, 
what you're doing is you're extruding and then we're scaling in a little bit. Now think of this as like the border of the TV. You're gonna wanna scale in just a tad bit, not too much. And then what you're gonna do also is you're gonna press E again and then drag it on the Y axis to so just bring it back a little bit. Okay. So now when you click material preview, you can see it's looking like kind of like a painting. You can make, make our video clip just a tad bit bigger. Sometimes you may run into a bit of an issue like I'm running into right now, where it looks like we got some dead space just right there. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back a little bit. Make sure it's wireframe. And then let's just go ahead and do the same steps that we had essentially extruding but scaling downwards. So extrude and scale in. You see a little bit. You don't need it to be too crazy. Let's grab that visual. Let's pull it. And let's make sure. Select our cube again. Grab the Y and pull it in a little bit. And you can see we got that extrusion kind of coming in. Oops. It's a bit of a delicate one, that's for sure. Some of you may still run into this issue and I'm gonna show you the fix that I'm gonna do right now. Just so it save us time here. You can drag your that little like bevel that we have right here. You just drag it up by pressing G and Z. To be honest, no one's probably gonna tell, but let's just go ahead and make sure things are a little clean here. You can see we have a bit of like a TV. going on which is fine let's just do a little bit more all right we're gonna leave it as that for right now and let's go ahead and play around with the second side of it so we're gonna do the same kind of thing but we're gonna extrude out so you're gonna press E then S bring it in a tad bit and press E Y and just pull it out a little bit and you get a bit of like this TV kind of shape, which I think is perfectly fine. So I'm going to call this TV container. If you click play, you can kind of see we have something. We're not going to mess with materials yet. We're just doing the modeling. All right, cool. Perfect, my friend. I'm going to go ahead and select both. I'm going to create a collection. I'm going to call it TV uh, model. And now I'm just gonna give it a nice little color. I'm gonna take our OG TV model, bring it over here. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it over to the left. Now I'm gonna test pulling it in as a collection instance. So to do that, press Shift A. Collections. Now you see we're running into a bit of an issue. It looks like within our TV model. we're getting not the same thing. So I believe the fix here is what we need is press, you're gonna parent the two. So let's press attack on Titan visual, TV container, press control P, set parent. Now if we head over here, TV model, looks like we're still running into an issue. It's really weird. Oh, we're not actually, my friend. The issue is the origin. So you're probably having the same issue I am. So set geometry to origin. And now we have essentially our TV model clone. You can bring in another one of those. And you see we have multiple. So for everyone that you probably just did the same thing I did, which you have to do within the 
collection instances, you're gonna have to set object, set origin, geometry to origin. And from there you should be great. Okay, so we have our double. Now we need to create a bit of a landscape to have this composition. Open up your plane. And for everyone making a plane, just make sure you have it set on your original collection. And press S, eight. We're just gonna make it eight by eight. We don't want it too crazy. And by this point, we need to bring in a bit of a camera just so we can make sure we're looking at things properly. Split the work environment. Have one of them view camera, press tilde. Let's see, animation still works. Let's bring in some blocks to just create like a, a background for what we're gonna be doing. So bring in a big old cube. I'm bringing my cube right about here. Rotate it a little bit. Scale it on the Y axis. Scale on the Z axis. I'm gonna move it a little bit around there. Then we're gonna bring in another cube and bring it back. One of the reasons why I like to have two sections is I like to just see the camera view at the same time while having a view where I can just, oops, see the entire composition as a whole. Let's bring this up a little bit. I'm gonna have it, whoa, S Z. A little bit right around there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of like this area to bring a shadow in. Um, and our text is gonna live right around here. So what we're gonna do in our camera, turn on viewport display, do that so we can just see composition guys. We're gonna have our thirds. We're gonna have our center lines too, to make it really interesting. Okay, so now we're just gonna assemble some of the TVs. I like to have the TVs a little bit rotated. So let's just give it this like slight rotation and press Shift D to duplicate. Move one on the X axis, just like you can play with it. Have them rotate on the Y to give it that like hanging feel. We want them to be hanging in a sense. So rotate them on the Y axis just so you can give it that vertical like, oh, this TV is totally hanging in some sort of like artistic comp composition. So press F to just scale it. I have some smaller TVs. Let's bring one over here. Let's point it kind of going this way a little bigger, bring another one, bring one further back. You want to give things depth, depth too when you're creating. You want to have like one in the background so the light's kind of shining in this zone. Bring another one, kind of, let's get a different kind of angle, something fun. Feel free to get really fun with this. You could have a lot of TVs, but let's double check one more time. Press play. We have our TVs going here. Okay. Now let's play around with the materials and the lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and do another horizontal split. I'm going to give myself a little bit less space up top here. Go ahead and click your drop down shader editor. And we're gonna go ahead into rendered mode. So let's first and foremost, we're gonna have to click into our original model for our TV container. Click the Attack on Titan visual. Open this up. And connect that MOV or whatever frame uh, file you have. And go ahead and click the color to the emission. And then give the emission strength around five ish. So now we have like this 
TV uh, brightness because, come on, TVs are not just like, <laughs> they're not just in the dark. I, in my previous composition, I played around a bit with like, let's make it a little bit rough. Like TV screens are a little matted from what I found. I don't know about giving it any metallic. I think that's fine for now. Okay, so now we have that set up. Let's go ahead and I believe we can give the environment a little bit of light. So let's go back over to our scene settings. Click the color. And just boost it up a tad bit. Okay. Cool. Let's do that. We're going to come back to that. So let's click our plane, make a new material in our plane. I'm going to call it floor. Turn the metallic all the way up. Turn your roughness a bit down. You want to have the TV having a nice little reflection. Okay. You want to also, we're going to go ahead and give it like a bit of like this uh, uh, textured kind of feel, like a floor. So on color ramp, let's do this within the roughness. And let's do a Voronoi texture. Collect the. You can see it here. I'm going to increase the scale by quite a bit. 200. You can see now we get this like nice fun texture. Let me get a little blue. All right, we can leave it like that for now. But if you play with it, sight. Let's not leave it like that for now. Let's pull in. Oh, my timer's going off. Give me one second. All right, so now what we're gonna do, since we have our floor kind of there, open up a new material. I'm gonna call this the walls. Give our walls a bit of like this blue, I like this like light bluish color. I'll increase the metallic a little bit. Just give it this like area kind of effect, but you want the roughness to be up because you don't want to see the exact reflection. Go ahead. Assign that material to both of your walls. Now, <clears throat> from here, I believe there's a few things we could do. So one, you can see that gray background is still kind of coming through. Um, we want it to be, oops, dark back there. We don't want it to be light. So just go ahead, drag a plane over there, rotate it to 90 degrees, and just scale it a lot. And then I'm going to create a new thing. I'm going to call it background the material that is. Bring it all the way down. There we go. Now we have this darker background. Let's just look at this in the full kind of view. You should be some frame rate drop here. The one thing we didn't materialize is our TVs. I just realized that. So. What you want to do with your TV container, give it a new material. It's going to be a dark kind of material, something like a TV. Uh, not much metallic. Some TVs are a little glossy, so let's give it a little bit of metallic. And we're going to do one of the final parts of modeling after we finished kind of putting together all of our uh, TVs. I'm going to create essentially the, the hook, the wire that's hanging from this all. So go ahead and create a cylinder, bring it down, like a super tiny cylinder. And then if you scale it on the z-axis, you can kind of see we get this like wire. I don't know what you would call this. A line? It's like a line that hangs from it. And this one requires a bit of your creative justification, right? Do you want these things to be fully like... Um, 
correct in terms of gravity? Do you want them to be small? Do you want them to be large? I'm going to go ahead and make the same material I made for the TV. Um, this one, so let's just call it TV. And then what you could do is you could just simply you could bring them, you can make them a little bigger if you want. Look a little bit nicer. Duplicate it, drag it on out. Around there. Duplicate another one. Just fill in the dots. I'm gonna go ahead and just fast forward for you. I'll go back. So now we pretty much have our composition set up. You can see there's some sort of room. If you open up our guide skin, we have a top level, you lift room for your typography, a little bit on the bottom. And we're pretty much ready to set it out and render it. So let's go ahead and do that for right now. So for my friends that are still learning how to uh, do the settings, so go over here to your it's printer like icon go to output you're gonna ff mpeg video make sure the encoding is mpeg 4 I'm gonna do mine perpetually lossless I'm gonna go ahead and set exactly where I want this to live which I'm gonna have it live in my blender content folder no surprise there I've done this before so you'll see this attack on tight and tutorial mp4 I'm going to go ahead and click render. I'm going to take a step away from the computer. I suggest you do that. You've been doing some pretty good work here so far. So just take a step and let this sink in. And then once your render is done rendering, let's go ahead and dive right into Figma. Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to do before you exit and your render is done, let's go ahead and just save a still shot of that image. And I'm going to call it still AOT. PNG, right? Head over to your Figma link. Figma, Photoshop, prefer preferably, I'm a Figma guy. Um, it's free. It could run on PC and Mac. And it'll be super simple for you to do this right now. So instead of, I don't want to dive too deep into how to use Figma and all that. So I'm just going to show you the bare necessities. So what you're going to want to do is create a frame that is akin to the video that you just created. So mine was 1920 by 1080 from Blender, which is the default per usual. And we're gonna go ahead and take that still that you created. Oops, export. Take that still. And the reason why we take the still is because we just want to have a brief reference. We're not, this is, has nothing to do with the actual like uh, video file. So we're gonna need a brief reference. So what I like to also do from here, after you get your reference in Figma, go ahead and create a layout grid. Switch from grid to columns. Do about 12 columns. And from there, if you press uh, on the PC, it's Control Shift 4. The Mac, I totally forget, but if you wanna figure that out, go to view, just turn that. So what we're going to want is a simple, super simple thing. What you're going to play around with is I've used a display font called Thunder. I've linked it before. I'll link it again. It's on Behance. And with that, you can just like go wild. But you want to have a display font, something that looks nice. And we're going to just keep things within our reference frames here. The layout grid is the Bible. It is all the rules that you need to follow. So I'm going to write attack on Titan. And what you can do, instead of having to play with the numbers, just press K to activate the scale key. Just drag it on in. Just drag it on in. And make it match your layout grid. And you should be fine. Okay, so we got our, got our flavorful attack on Titan. And you can use a typeface called Enter which should be available on everyone's Figma, simply because that is, I believe, a Google font, and you can use that. 
I'm gonna put mine around 24. I might just around mess around with it. I went ahead and pulled up some Google that I found some like some details about Attack on Titan on Google. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. We're essentially adding this text. This could be something about uh, the creation that you made, something about the video clips. I'm gonna bring it all in. Most likely when you copy and paste, you're gonna get this huge kind of a uh, row. Let's go ahead and reel it on down. And what you're gonna do, just make sure it all fits in my layout. And to make it interesting, you can go ahead and text align justified. You can make it a little bit smaller, so it's kind of big. Don't want it to since things are a little bit more flavorful. Don't worry about legibility and all that you don't really need that right now you can find a nice little copy and paste arrow online i like to bring i just brought mine in just because i thought it's you want a little i like to think of them as adding a little bit of like some sprinkles to the mix just rotate it and from there you pretty much have it so what you're gonna do is select everything that you made in Figma. Actually just locking your still. Press Control G to group it. And press Control on Windows, it's uh, Alt. Control Alt G for the frame. If you're using a Mac, I believe it's Control Command G to create a frame. Go ahead and hold down Control and just expand your frame to the limits of the workspace the reason we do that is because we don't want to have to play around and position things when we're creating so attack on titan uh text frame then you're going to export that there's a png you do 2x if you're feeling flavorful i like 2x because it looks a little bit cleaner and let's go ahead and export that now we're going to open up our video editing program I'm gonna use DaVinci Resolve, it's free as well. So everything we just touched today is all free. Just gonna go ahead and create a new project. Once you're in your video editing program, this is a super simple two step, more three, uh, kind of, export so let's go ahead and open up our clip from blender let's drag it into the media you want to make sure the frame rate is matching bring it on down grab the thing you made on figma push that there and you're just going to simply just overlay it and you're just going to Use your video tool to duplicate, make it match up. And you have it overlaid and it matches up. You can see you have this very cool museum kind of vibe here. And honestly, I think you did really well today. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or anything that you've ran into issues with, feel free to comment below. I'll be monitoring those comments and I'm more than happy to help anyone get through anything they're stuck on. So thank you once again and many blessings and I'll see you around. Peace out.